Hi everyone. So I just wanted to make a short kind of tutorial video to show you the difference in what your coloring can look like when it just starts out and you're just using maybe two. I, I always start with like two colors and pick like two colors and I place those down and I kind of just start picking and adding more colors. As you can see down here at this part, it has a lot more depth and everything because I've added in more colors and darker shades to really brighten up the brightest or lightest color. So over here, you can see this is where I just started with the two shades. And the two shades that I used were, let me see, can I get it in frame? PC1012 and I think it's Jasmine. And then the other one I started out with, which were two, my two just base colors yesterday when I posted it to the group and then um, PC943, which is burnt ochre. Okay, and then, so I did the whole thing, or I did a lot of it and covered it, you know, fairly most of it, the top of the tree. I haven't gotten down here yet, but I thought this doesn't really give it enough definition or make it really look good. So after I went in with those, then I picked up a little while ago, I went in and picked up the pumpkin orange thinking it maybe could use a little bit of that deep orange color in it. And I just kind of started going over some of the edges. Let me see if I can get this in frame. It's kind of hard because I have to hold my phone while I'm doing it. I still have to concentrate on what I'm doing at the same time, so it makes it a little difficult. But if I go in here and I just add a little bit of this deeper orange in here, you could even go over your lightest shade wherever you think it might look good. I don't really follow any rules you know, when I'm coloring, like the sun is coming from this way and I need to make sure this is brighter or lighter or it's showing this or that. I just kind of color the way that I want to. Every once in a while, I'll watch a tutorial on YouTube or something and, you know, they give all the, this is where the light is coming from and this is how you should do it and you just kind of have to imagine where the light would be coming from and this is the reflective area and so you want it lighter here and this and that. I don't really follow all those rules. I kind of just do what I want and make it look the way that I want it and add highlights where I want them and don't add them where I don't want them and darken up the areas I want and I kind of like my coloring pages to look like they have a lot of the bright colors in it to where it creates highlights like you could see I've done in the branches here and I've done it in all the other areas too like here I used a yellow to brighten it up and make it pop and I did the same and added some yellow in over here on the green side too to make it kind of bright and pop and then I went over the whole thing in cream to kind of blend it over because cream always adds that extra highlight but here for the highlight I'm using the what was it the jasmine okay so then we can go back in with our other color and kind of add more of the browns I don't know if you guys can see and it's hard for me to see because I'm losing lighting because the phone is there so I'm just kind of going over where I think I want more of this regular base color but still leaving the highlights there you don't want to go over too much of the color you're using to brighten it up and create that highlight effect which for me it's that jasmine oh, 
will keep going out of frame. And the camera keeps blurring. That's fabulous. Okay, and then the orange just kind of brightens it up. And as you could see over here, I kind of did it along the edges to create more depth with the brighter color. I really shouldn't say, but it's kind of like a deep orange. Okay. And then what I did when I wanted to see how this one is really popping down here, I've already gone over all of this. But to do that, I went and grabbed my Dark Umber, which is PC947. And this is where the magic comes in because you just very lightly, when you're holding your pencil, make sure you kind of hold it like this so that you're not putting a lot of pressure and you're just kind of shading where you need where you need to shade. And also make sure that your tip is pretty sharp because if it's not, especially on something that is as detailed as this is, you're really gonna mess up and it's not going to look right. So you really wanna make sure that those two things are in check because if you apply too much pressure, it's gonna go down too dark and it's not gonna look good. And then when you go back over it to blend it, it's gonna to pull too much of that pigment into your drawing or into your coloring and it's going to not give it the right effect. So if I wanna just come in here, I can't watch the camera, I just have to kind of concentrate on what I'm doing because like I said, I don't wanna lay down too much or more than I need. See how it just kind of makes it pop? I even like over here, went in, see like right here, and I just kind of brought it down into the other deeper orange color. And then I went on the edges and then here where this little coyote or wolf or whatever it may be is, I kind of added it around where his body is to kind of create that depth there too. You always want to try to make it look like something is standing in front of your object that you're coloring. Like you could tell that this coyote or wolf is to the front. So his little tail is laying here on top of the tree. And so I would put a lot of extra shading in there because you want it to look like it's more, you know, like the coyote is coming to the front. And that's how you would do that. So if I come over here And I just continue to add this darkest brown. It will create, see how here it's creating a lot more depth. You just have to be very careful that you don't put it in places that you don't want it. See like right here coming down from the tree and then here. It's so hard for me to see while I'm trying to do these videos. I really need to get a better way of doing this, a stand or something so that I could do this on my phone. But like here, this little piece that's hanging down, I think that that would look best a lot darker. So you could even bring it down into the deeper um, orange color 
to really give a whole different effect. I didn't do any of this over here yet, so I could go in and show you what this looks like once I add it in here. But I mean, look at the difference. It just creates a whole new, very intense, bold look and adds a lot of character to whatever it is you're coloring. Could even go in here and kind of try to follow some of these lines that are here. Look at the difference in that. And then you can come back. I'm going to come back with my pumpkin orange and kind of go over those areas that were a little deeper with the orange color and add those back in there. I had also used the burnt ochre, so you don't want it all to be that pumpkin orange. You kind of want these colors all just blended in. And all of your layering and your blending will come together and just create a whole different look. Like, see how I left all this yellow in there? I think that that really stands out and I want to keep that there. I really like how it looks. And I could make it look and st or I can make it stand out even more by coming in here and doing this with my darkest shade, the dark umber. See how I'm just kind of outlining things. And see, last week I was on YouTube and I was watching somebody's video. I don't even know who it was, but I don't know. I'm assuming she had an art degree and she kept saying, don't outline things. And I know I always teach you not to outline things, she said. But that's how I do it all the time in my coloring. And when I heard her say that, I was like, well, I guess I really don't follow the rules. I mean, really, it's art. I don't feel like there really are any rules that you should be following. I think that everybody has their own style. and just needs to do your own piece of art the way that you like it and how you think it looks good. And after you watch all these different tutorials and stuff by other colorists or artists or whatever, you could kind of bring all of those together and create your own style from those because I mean naturally that's what's going to happen but yeah we could come in here back with our um, dark umber and see how that just makes such a pronounced difference and I just kind of went out the lines there a little bit. So I'm trying to concentrate on videoing, but that's okay. Because, like I say all the time, there are no mistakes when you color. It's art. And I really don't think there are any mistakes when it comes to art. And everything is fixable.
So when I do something like that, it really doesn't bother me because I know that nobody will see it and I'll find a way to fix it later. But that's basically how you do it. I hope that helps some of you, but I mean, I show you all the time how to add depth and a lot of times I'll use grays with other colors and I could do a video on that too, but I really wanted to show how this is coming along. And if anybody's wondering what book this is, this is um, The Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby, Kirby Rosanas. I'm not sure how to say his name, but this is the page I'm working on. And again, the colors that I was using for the branch were the pumpkin orange, the burnt ochre, the jasmine, and then the dark umber is the one that I used to kind of bring it to life, so to speak. And I will go back over all of that and I'll blend it even in, in even more and go over where the brighter color is the jasmine is being used and finish this up and I'll post it later when it's done but I hope this helps some of you I hope you all have a great day bye